psychotic dude I've ever hooked up with. So his first question was, what's your body count? Naturally, I divided my true number by five to give him a much prettier number to look at. Once he was satisfied with my answer, he decided we should talk and try to pursue a relationship. So we start to talk, but he would vocally express to me he didn't like that I lived 30 minutes away because he could not regularly stop by and check in my dorm to make sure I was not sleeping with other people. So I didn't text him for two hours because I had to study for an exam, and he goes, well, you're a whore and you probably gave me gonorrhea. You're putting my life and my son's life in danger. Well, an STD is sexually transmitted, so it's concerning I'm putting your son's life in danger, but two weeks prior I got a test. Ring, ring. The results are in. I'm clean. So, he then proceeds to say, I will tell everyone you love. I'll make a PowerPoint presentation, show it to your college to show everyone how nasty you are. I wasn't concerned, so I blocked him. He then texts me off of his son's phone and goes, I have an infinite amount of resources. Don't block me again. Trying to scare me. Well, I blocked the son. Radio silence. Where's your infinite amount of resources? Party story time! Okay, so I went to a party and I showed up there super early because I'm literally that person. Anyways, I was talking to the guy throwing the party and I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I don't really want to drink. Yes, I'm literally the lamest person alive anyways. He's like, okay, do you want a bottle of vodka? Boy, I just told you I didn't want to drink. And he's like, no, like an empty one. You can fill up with water and pretend you're drinking. And I'm like, you're a genius. So I do just that. And I walk around the party drinking out of this bottle of vodka that actually has water in it. People literally thought I was legendary. They thought I was getting so drunk. So basically at this point, I was lying to everybody at the party. So anyways, I get thirsty, so I step outside and start ch chugging this bottle of vodka that's actually water. And I look to my left, and there's this girl literally staring at me! Okay, I have like a really gross, disgusting story time, so just listen. So like in 7th grade, like girls at my middle school thought it was like trendy and like cute and quirky to like piss your pants. Like at school. Like do it at school. Like, they would, like, laugh so hard that, like, <laughs> oops, like, they peed themselves. And, like, would keep it on their butt all day. And then they would, like, ask for, like, their crush's sweatshirt to, like, cover up, like, the pee on their butt just because, like, they're so cute and quirky. And I remember this one girl pissed herself at a choir concert backstage in the choir room, and the whole entire choir room smelled for, like, a day, and there was just a puddle of pee on the seat. And she literally had to go to the bathroom and wet her whole pants so that you couldn't tell that she pissed herself. Like, it got to the point where, like, two or three girls a day were walking around the school with pee on their butt. And, like, no one said anything. Like, it was cute and trendy. And, like, even the guys jumped on it. They were like, oh, oh my god, like, she peed. Like, what? <laughs> like, it's just so, like, unbelievable. But, like, it literally happened, and I don't know why. Story time, motherfuckers. My boyfriend throws his party. I'm like, can I bring my best friend? He says, I don't really know her. And then I was like, I'm gonna bring her anyway. A little bit into the party, he's like, I'm gonna go pick up my friend, and I was like, okay, I sat outside. My best friend was inside, I thought she was. I didn't really care what she was doing. I trusted her. He comes back 30 minutes later, comes outside, and everything is fine, he's not suspicious at all. I then sleep over at his house that night. He's in the shower and his phone is blowing up, like blowing up, and I'm like, who the fuck is that? My Snoopy ass looks on his phone, it's this guy Luke, and he doesn't have any friends named Luke. It was constant texts like, you need to break up with her, you can do so much better, blah, blah, blah. And then, Luke says, you know she's my best friend, she can't know about this. So I sat there. They've been hooking up our whole relationship. So, I tell his mom, and I leave. I'm a fucking circus. This is a crazy story time of when I used to work at Tilly's, so buckle up. This middle-aged mom walks in the store, right? And she just starts walking around the men's section and literally just grabbing everything she sees. I mean, she's not even looking at the sizes. So we thought that was weird, so we went up and asked her if she needs any help, and of course she said no. Then she decides that she wants to try everything on. So I unlocked a room for her, and then I told her that she can only have seven at a time, and she literally had a million things, and she just ran in, shut the door, and cut me off. So we started to get suspicious, so I started talking over my little headset thingy and telling the people around the store what's going on. We knocked on the door like three times asking if she needed help or needed any other sizes, and of course she just said no again. Then she comes barging out and literally runs, runs to the front door and just leaves. So I walk in to see, and there's literally a bloody tampon on the floor. Two days later, she comes back to the store? 
Crazy story time about how my mom kidnapped my sister. So my mom and dad split whenever I was really young. And at this time, they were always in and out of court battling for custody over my sister and I. Well, the one day my dad drives my mom downtown to the courthouse because she didn't have a ride. And before she gets out of the car, she's like, can I give the girls a hug? And my dad was like, yeah, go ahead. Little background information. I was more of a daddy's girl. My sister was more of a mommy's girl, which is probably the reason why she took her. I was sitting by the window. My sister was sitting in the middle seat. So she gives me a hug. Next thing I know, my sister's seatbelt was unbuckled and my mom was running across the street with her in the middle of downtown. Didn't even look for cars. So my dad got out of the car, ran over, grabbed her, picked both of them up and walked over to the sidewalk and my mom was screaming bloody murder. So this guy called the cops and my dad was trying to show them custody papers because he had full custody. But the cop knew my mom so he let her take my sister. We got her back but I didn't see this bitch for like four months. Y'all, a cheater is a cheater, and if he's a cheater, then he's going to cheat. It don't matter what you do, what you say, how you dress, how you act, or what you change for him. If he wants to cheat on you, he's going to cheat on you. And a lot of the times, the girl that he cheats with is not prettier or better than you. I'm going to explain why. Men that cheat, not men, boys that cheat <laughs> are very insecure. And a lot of the times, they get with girls who are too much to handle because they want to see if they can get him. They get him, they fall in love, but then they realize, oh, this girl's too good for me. Oh, this girl could get anybody she wants. She might cheat on me. She might do me dirty. And their ego starts to suffer a little bit. So what they do is they go and talk to other girls and do stuff with other girls to boost their ego a little bit. But you need to know that they're actually really insecure, really broken, and have nothing going for themselves. If they have to cheat on somebody to feel better about themselves, Oh, honey, <laughs> you, you dodged the bullet with that one, okay? Don't worry about it, keep it pushing. Story time about my toxic ex-friend group. So my freshman year, I had moved to a new high school. So right away, I started being friends with this group of girls and they were super nice. And I was also friends with this group of guys. Well, since I was friends with both groups, we all started hanging out all the time, but only whenever I was there. The boys just didn't want to hang out with the other girls. And after a few months, the girls started acting really strange. So anytime that I would hang out with the boys and not invite them, they would ignore me for a whole week. Meaning they wouldn't talk to me in school, they wouldn't answer my messages, or anything like that. Not a single one of them. And also, anytime that we hung out, they would be like, oh, invite the boys. And it was like they never wanted to hang out with me. So the one night, one of the boys was throwing a party. And I was going and the girls asked if they could come, but they had drama with a lot of people so the boys didn't want them coming, but I invited them anyways. Like for part two. Story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with a 17 year old girl. So when summer started, I started working at this new job and I had a really good connection with one of my coworkers and he was 28 years old. So we started talking. But I would get mad at him a lot because he would ignore my messages asking to hang out. And on top of that, every time that we got done with work, we would all go sit and eat and he would sit next to this one girl. And by the way, she was 17. And I could see them flirting all the time. Well, finally, once summer ended, she moved away. And then I felt like I had a real chance to start dating him. So we started hanging out a lot and hooking up a lot. After a few months, I started taking our relationship serious. Well, apparently not for him because there was this girl on his phone that he had been texting a lot. So weirdly enough, after that, I get a DM from the girl that he would always flirt with at work. And she asked me if I was dating him. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, oh, well, he's been texting me a lot. So then I blocked her and went and hooked up with one of his friends that night, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with a 17-year-old girl. So like I said, I hooked up with his friend that night, but I didn't tell him for a couple months because he would always say that we weren't dating, even though we were basically in a relationship. So we were doing really good until around Christmas time. So after he gave me my gifts, which was socks and a candle, he left for Massachusetts. I don't know if I said that right. And a month before this, I had unblocked the girl that he was flirting with. So weirdly enough, after he left, she DM'd me. Basically asking if I was still dating him again. And I was like, yeah, why? And she goes, hmm, well, I need to tell you something. He actually took my virginity. And he's been sending me a lot of gifts, like a record player and albums. And we've been talking on the phone every night. 
So when I confronted him about it, he said he felt bad for her because he took her virginity. So after that, I confessed to hooking up with his best friend and called him a child predator. Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year, my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time, my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well, like an hour into the party, all the adults were super drunk. So before we all opened gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone, so I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open, they don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody so my mom calls the cop says that an adult is touching an underage boy and she calls his mom tells her what happened so my boyfriend and i broke up so that spread around the whole school and word got out that they actually started seeing each other crazy story time about how my sister and i found out that we were hooking up with the same guy so i was a freshman my sister was a sophomore and there was this really cute guy in her grade that i liked but I could never find a way to talk to him because we weren't in the same grade and had none of the same classes. And my sister and I were not close at all. Like, we didn't tell each other shit. We didn't really talk to each other or anything. So by that being said, we never told each other about the boys that we liked. We just didn't have that bond. Well, track season came around. So they called all the people down who wanted to do track. And I saw him walk past my classroom window, so I decided to go too. So I signed up for track and him and I started to talk a little bit. We exchanged numbers and he was popular, I wasn't, so he didn't want to be seen with me. So after attendance, we would go to this graveyard right by the track and hook up. Well, the next day we had a meet in our school. So him and I went to the graveyard, hooked up, and that's when it started getting crazy like for part two. Part two. So on our way back from doing our thing... We had saw a group of kids that were behind this bush and they were chiefing. And we didn't think that they saw us because we were like, oh, they're just smoking, like whatever. So I go back to the meet, everything is good until the end of the meet. One of my best friends sends me this picture that I guess somebody posted on their story. And it was a picture of me and the kid hooking up. And next thing I know, my sister is blowing up my phone. And like I said, my sister and I didn't have a good bond, so I didn't give a shit what she had to say because I didn't know. So then I got home. <laughs> and as soon as I walked into my room, my sister was literally waiting there for me. And she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, him and I are in a relationship. And I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? And she was like, well, it's on the down low, but we're in a relationship. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're a whore. So then she decides to drive both of us over to his house. So we all decided to just stay away from each other. But then they got back together. So I just figured that wasn't fair and I'm still hooking up with him while they're together. 